Hello friends, in this video we will be synthesizing glycine using monochloroacetic acid and ammonium carbonate. This preparation is adapted from Vogel's book of practical organic chemistry. Chemicals required for this experiment are 18 grams of ammonium carbonate, 25 milliliters of concentrated 25% ammonia solution, 5 grams of monochloroacetic acid and approximately 60 milliliters of methanol. Start by weighing 18 grams of ammonium carbonate. It's a white powder with a strong smell of ammonia. Here I'm using lab grade purity compound. Next, 5 grams of monochloroacetic acid was weighed out. A word of precaution on monochloroacetic acid. Even though it looks like sugar crystals, contact with skin would result in unpleasant burns. So handle with extreme care. 250ml a 250 ml round bottom flask was clamped on a stand over a hot plate stirrer and a stirring bar was placed inside. Now 18 grams of ammonium carbonate was charged into the flask. I would recommend using a powder funnel to avoid spilling the compound outside the flask. Next, 15 ml of distilled water was added to the flask to dissolve the compound. Stirring was turned on and then 25 ml of 25% ammonia solution was added to the flask. On adding the ammonia, most of the solid dissolves and a clear solution is obtained. If there are still undissolved ammonium carbonate, gentle heating could be applied. Do not heat too much as ammonia vapors would easily escape out of the flask. 5 ml of distilled water was added to the beaker containing monochloroacetic acid. The beaker was whirled gently and the compound easily gets dissolved in it. Using a pipette, monochloroacetic acid was added dropwise to the flask containing ammonium carbonate. The flask was stirred throughout the addition. Dense white fumes of ammonium chloride was produced. This is the equation of the reaction taking place. Monochloroacetic acid reacts with ammonia producing aminoacetic acid glycine and ammonium chloride. Once all the acid is added, the flask was stoppered and a clamp was applied to prevent the stopper from sliding out. Allow the flask to stand for 24 hours at room temperature. Then the flask was set up for vacuum distillation. The flask was placed in a heating mantle and a receiving end of the condenser was attached to a recovery bend with IC joint and a vacuum adapter. The vacuum pump hose was attached to it. The mixture was then heated to around 40 degrees C and then vacuum was applied. You can see the solution boiling. Distillation was carried out under reduced pressure until the volume of the flask is about 10 ml. The solution attained has a dark color. This is to be expected. Now 40 ml of methanol was added to the flask and it was placed in a nice bath with occasional swirling. You can soon see a crystalline precipitate crashing out. This is the crude glycine which contain ammonium chloride as the chief impurity. The crystals were recovered by vacuum filtration. Methanol was used to wash the crude product in the Buchner funnel itself and this will remove most of the ammonium chloride impurity. The crude product will look something like this after washing with methanol. Vacuum was kept on for about 15 to 30 minutes to completely dry the product and weight of the crude product was determined. It was 2.62 grams which is exactly what is mentioned in the textbook. Now we will purify the product. For that 5 ml of distilled water was added to the compound. 
Glycine is highly soluble in water and everything dissolved and a clear dark solution was obtained. Now few grams of activated charcoal was added and the solution was boiled. Then it was filtered. Activated charcoal helps in removing most of the colored impurity and this would make the compound much white in color. To the filtrate around 20 ml of methanol was added and you will see the white crystalline precipitate of glycine crashing out. Ammonium chloride is pretty much soluble in methanol but glycine is insoluble in methanol and that is why we are using methyl alcohol here. It was then vacuum filtered and washed with few milliliters of ether to dry. The pure product appeared to be much more better in terms of color. You can try a second time purification but I am stopping here. I got 2 grams of the product. I then did the ninhydrin test to confirm the presence of alpha amino acids. To a 2% solution of glycine, few drops of ninhydrin reagent was added and the test tube was placed in a hot boiling water bath for few minutes. A purple color was obtained which confirms the presence of alpha amino acid glycine. That's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed my video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are given in the description. Once again thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my future videos. Thank you.